Hello and welcome. With each passing generation, gaming laptops are getting more and more powerful. Our expectations are currently rising as we see the capabilities of technology and particularly the experiences that it can deliver. This year, in 2023, 18-inch laptops have made a big splash by creating yet a larger expectation for gamers and immersion and a lifetime enjoyment for those such as myself. The 2023 ASUS ROG Strix G18 does so much well that it's a darn shame that the 4070 laptop GPU fails to deliver on the 140 watts of performance that's promised by the specs. Does that mean that this is a bad machine and there's a no buy? For many it will be so, and I hope that you found the answer that you're looking for. But in reality, just like much of life itself, it depends. If you care to hear my point of view, then let's discuss. We'll break down this gaming laptop review into a few sections as follows. We will begin with talking about the build quality, then look at the weight and the feel of carrying the laptop around, laptop operation on your lap, one hand opening of the lid, the power adapter and its weight, the star of the show, the 18 inch Quad HD Plus 2560 by 1600, 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, the keyboard, the trackpad, the ports, RGB, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, battery life, charging speeds, the display, the CPU, we'll look at the RAM, talk about the Armory Crate software that's used to control this laptop, switch between modes and performance modes. And finally, we'll talk about the elephant in the room, which is that 4070 laptop GPU with eight gigs of RAM in this device, which should be capable of 140 watts. And, that, and then we'll wrap up with my conclusions, talking about value and what is the value proposition that this laptop brings to the table and whether or not you should consider this as your next gaming laptop. Though much of the materials used in its construction are plastic, they are not bad feeling plastics. The lid is plastic, the bottom body of the unit is also made of much of plastic. It feels solid and sturdy. At no point do you feel that this is going to snap into two pieces for you. It's much like some of the other thinner laptops or those LG Grams that are quite famous uh, for their thinness and lightness. That said, one thing that may not be for everyone is that the keyboard deck features a semi-transparent finish around the edges and it also has a very gamery vibe which may not be for everyone. So if that's not your cup of tea, then that's something you should look out for. Overall, no issues with build quality. It's plastic. It is what it is. It's solid. It's rigid. There's very little flex in the chassis or the screen lid and I am pretty okay with that. Now, one hand opening, it's quite easy to open this laptop with one hand. It is quite sturdy and the hinge maintains itself at pretty much any level all the way from around 20, 25 degrees up until the full reclined back, which I believe is somewhere around 120 degrees. It, it does not go as far back as some of the other laptops that you may be used to. So keep that in mind when looking at screen uh, flex and how far you want to be able to lay the screen back. The next thing to discuss is the on-lap operation of this laptop. And thus far, I've had pretty good success with using this device on my lap without having any issues with thermal heat dissipation or heat soaking into my legs or my body and it getting too hot for being able to use it on the laptop. Now that said, I was not playing games with the laptop on my lap, on my legs. And the other thing is to keep in mind, if you're in bed, for example, and you've got a quilt or some sort of blanket and you set the laptop on the on your legs on the blanket, you're going to suffocate the device from airflow and it's going to heat up quite a bit and probably become most uncomfortable. Besides that, the feet are in good positions. They rest well on, on your legs. And in normal operation, they don't cause any kind of discomfort uh, or any biting into your legs uh, like I've had with previous laptops. Next is the power adapter and charging. The power adapter supplied with this unit with the RTX 4070 GPU is a 280 watt affair. If you get the 4080 or the 4090 models, you'll be supplied with a 330 watt brick, and that is indeed a brick. Since this one is a lot more compact, it's a lot more portable and weighs around 1.2 pounds or somewhere around 600 grams. Now that said, the charging speed is pretty good. You can charge or fast charge on this laptop using the supplied power adapter with a barrel plug from zero to 50, and that's a completely empty battery all the way to 50% in approximately 30 minutes. But then the rest of the charging times are pretty typical for these types of laptops. The laptop is powered by a 90 watt hour battery, and that seems to get you a fair distance. Port offering on this laptop is also fairly decent with a barrel plug for power adapter, uh, full size HDMI 2.1. There's a Thunderbolt 4 port on the left hand side. 
with additionally a USB Type-C with alt mode and 100 watts of charging in case of an emergency or if you just have a USB-C charger around. Uh, handy to get the laptop some juice so you can continue to work on the left hand side with a combo headphone audio jack and on the right hand side you'll find simply two usb type a ports for your mouse and i believe other such per peripherals for uh, gaming the rgb lighting is quite vivid on this laptop and it works quite well there's three levels of brightness uh, you can turn it all the way off you can turn it on to low there's a medium and then there's a high so the lights are quite vivid and it shines through the keycaps very, very nicely. Although I believe that the text font could have been a little bit better. It's a little bit too thin for my liking and they could have made better use of the key space to really spread out that text and make it more visible as they've done on some of their older laptops in the past. Uh, also, there's these media keys up here, which you know really light up well. Uh, and there's lots of functions and effects for the RGB lighting. Some of them can be controlled from the keyboard, but you can also control them from the Armory Crate software that's bundled with the laptop. In addition, there is an RGB light strip that wraps around the front of the laptop, from the left-hand side, all the way around the front and the right-hand side, right below where you would be resting your hand on the surface of the laptop on the keyboard deck. And that is also RGB controllable through the Armory Crate software. Next up is keyboard. Though this device does not come equipped with any kind of a mechanical keyboard I feel that at this price point it really should but it does not it has a good amount of key travel the keys are not mushy they're not spongy feeling they have good tactile feedback to them and I can get up to speed typing on this laptop without any issues the numpad however on the right hand side is quite squished the pitch has been reduced to allow that to be shoved in into the keyboard deck however what I don't understand and why Asus did this is that there's plenty of space on the deck of an 18 inch laptop why couldn't they have just kept the keys full size and that would have provided a much more usable and much more user-friendly full-size keyboard. The other gripe I have with the keyboard is that the arrow keys are jammed in between the squished numpad and the right shift key on the right hand, right hand side of the keyboard. The trackpad on this device is a nice glass touchpad surface. It's very, very smooth and your hands glide easily, your fingers on this trackpad. Uh, it handles gestures quite well. And as you can see here, I can navigate between multiple desktops and trigger all of the Windows uh, shortcuts with, with ease, as well as the multi-touch gestures. It is powered by Windows uh, drivers, so it seems to work very well. I've not had any issues whatsoever. And the click sound is pretty decent. There's no rattling, there's no wobble on this trackpad, and it does not look to be loose at any point. Also, the Wi-Fi on this device is very, very good. It is running an Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 Wi-Fi card for 2023, and it gets some very fast speed. I've seen it hover all the way up to 40 megabytes per second when downloading on my gigabit fiber internet connection. The same AX211 card also comes with Bluetooth 5.2 on board, and I've had a little bit of issues with the Bluetooth connectivity on this device, particularly with some of my older headphones that are 4.2 or 5.0 version of Bluetooth. Uh, I don't understand why that would be the case, but that is with what I've had with this laptop. Sometimes they would fail to connect until I toggled the Bluetooth off completely and turned it back on on this device. Uh, I've had no issues with those same headphones on some of my older machines or on my other desktop machine that I use them regularly as well. I tried to reset them before I paired them with this machine and then tried to reconnect. Uh, most often they would connect, but maybe one out of 10 times I would have this issue and toggling the Bluetooth off and back on again in the control panel would really get things working again. Next up is the Armory Crate. So this is the control panel software that comes pre-installed with the machine and is used to toggle between the performance mode, control the thermal noise, the fan profiles, and also do manual tuning and overclocking on both the CPU and the GPU, including the PL1 and PL2 limits on your CPU, as well as the power levels, the dynamic boost, and the temperature, the thermal limits on your GPU as well. I found this software to be quite buggy. Toggling between the modes often didn't work at all, or if it didn't work for some reason, you'd be left guessing as to why it didn't work, and you'd have to go and sleuth on your own as to why it was not working. Uh, there was no error message, nothing that was indicating to the user that there was some reason why it was not able to switch between the modes. Often I found myself toggling between the modes like an idiot five, four, five, six times before it would actually trigger a change between the modes. The best modes I found are either discrete GPU mode, which is the ultimate mode in, in Armory Crate, Use that if you want to get the, the maximum performance out of this laptop and the GPU combination. Uh, or if you're just, you know, every day you want to be able to use it in a multi-purpose environment, stick to Optimize. It will, it will use Advanced Optimus and you'll get a better balanced experience. Better life on this laptop has been fairly good for a laptop of this size with an 18 inch display with the i9-13980X running at 24 cores on this uh, on this laptop. So despite that, if you put it into battery saver mode and you know use the optimized mode which toggles advanced optimism, 
promise with from nvidia to make sure that you're using battery when you're away from the power source and unplugged to conserve some battery power and with that 90 watt hour battery that's installed in this device you know and the screen brightness turned about 50 percent down you should be able to get somewhere around four hours of real world use with this machine. Now for one of the stars of this machine here, the highlight I would say of this machine is that 18 inch display. It is a gorgeous 18 inch QHD plus 2560 by 1600 and 16 by 10 aspect ratio display at about 500 nits. I believe it covers 100% of DCI-P3 and it is simply gorgeous to look at. Any kind of gameplay, whether I was in Borderlands 3, looking at some of that ray tracing elements and those neon lights in Cyberpunk 2077, or looking at those updated grass and sky textures in The Witcher 3, it is just phenomenal. Combine that with a 240 hertz refresh rate and a three millisecond response time, this is a fantastic panel and it maintains its luminous and brightness uh, very, very well. So I was able to turn this down all the way to near 10 or 20% and use it in the dark, you know, lights off in my bed for a few hours without any eye strain. The RAM on this device is a DDR5 4800 megahertz kit. It's running two 16 gigabyte modules. Uh, it's a little bit unfortunate because some of the competitors, for example, the Razer Blade 18 for 2023 is offering much faster RAM, 5600 megahertz to be exact. And I know the, and I know that those kits are available in the market today. So I don't see why ASUS skimped on this considering this is a $3,000 machine. Um, you know, I really would have hoped that they would have opted for better and faster RAM. We know that faster RAM allows the CPU to have faster throughput, particularly in single player games or uh, games that may be bound to the CPU. So that said, there is some talk and rumblings on the Reddit and internet verse that Asus is perhaps considering or may release a future update with the BIOS to allow support for 52 or maybe 5600 megahertz RAMs in the future. But until that materializes, don't count your eggs in your basket. <laughs> Now we'll talk about the two main reasons why you would be looking at getting this, this laptop in 2023. That is the CPU and the GPU. So let's begin first with the CPU. It is an Intel i9-13980HX Raptor Lake S Affair for this CPU, which is a 24 core and 32 thread CPU. It's got eight performance cores and 16 efficient cores. Eight of those performance cores are multi-threaded, which means you get 16 threads and 16 single-threaded uh, cores from the efficiency core side for a total of 32 threads. And I've seen this machine basically chew through everything. My old Ryzen 5800H, which is supposed to be a Zen 3 CPU, and it was really you know, a hot topic at the time, compared to this basically struggles to run some of the Docker containers I have running during my regular developer workflow. If you're interested, go look at my developer workflow and developer review video of this laptop. For productivity, it is a real beast. And now for the main event, that RTX 4070 laptop GPU with eight gigabytes of VRAM for 2023. Why would Nvidia still leave that 4070 with eight gigabytes of RAM is beyond me. When we know that many of the games such as Cyberpunk and even uh, if you give the room to some of these games can stretch their legs well beyond eight gigabytes of VRAM, particularly with the high resolution, high resolution textures that are now found in many, many common and modern games. Uh, I'll be testing some additional games in the near future. You know, I'll be getting Hogwarts Legacy and also Forspoken when it releases. Diablo 4 is also coming down the pipe, so I'm excited to test those games on this uh, uh, or test those games on this machine with that 4070 and see how that VRAM bottleneck holds up. Now, that said, the other elephant in the room is that the 4070 is supposed to be able to perform all the way up to 140 watts on this machine, as stated by ASUS, as stated by NVIDIA, and I have yet to see those numbers materialize. I have seen regularly between 90, 95, 100, perhaps up to 105 watts in regular usage, with a blip here and there that shows 115 watts before it toggles right back down all the way to 100 watts or thereabouts. So I am not sure where the performance is. You can watch one of my other videos about performance tuning on this machine. I've spent a considerable amount of time trying to get that 140 watts out of this GPU. And thus far, it has not been possible. I'm hoping that this is just an ASUS BIOS update issue and there's something that's, you know, minor issue that's going wrong with this laptop. Once they get that out to us, hopefully we can get the full 140 watts we're promised. Otherwise, I feel that we're, we've been a little bit deceived and I'm quite unhappy with the performance from this laptop and that 4070 GPU. That said though, if you're, if you're looking at this laptop in a vacuum, you've never owned a gaming laptop before, this is your first gaming laptop, or you just want a big behemoth laptop because your old one is perhaps a few generations ago, maybe the nine or the 10 series gaming laptops, you're going to notice a significant change. 
despite the performance issues that we're seeing with the 4070 in this machine, not being able to hit 140 watts as promised, this in most of those triple AAA games from maybe one, two, or perhaps three years old, and even a little older, such as The Witcher 3 with all of the ray tracing updates and all of the maximum ray tracing performance, uh, and Cyberpunk, uh, Art, Cyberpunk 2077 with frame generation turned on, you can easily hit close to 60 frames per second in your average gameplay. Now, that's average gameplay, so you may still dip down to about 30s, the high 30s or low 40s on occasion, depending on what scene and where you're looking at in the game, but I was getting very close to 60 FPS, so I think from my perspective, particularly in those games because they're a little bit slower paced, you should have no issue being, ha being able to have an enjoyable gaming experience on this machine with that 4070. That said though, let's, right, let's lead right into our value discussion. So we cannot conclude this review of this laptop without looking at the overall value proposition and having just addressed the fact that that 4070 GPU cannot hit the promised 140 watts, what is the real value of this machine? At a purchase price of 3,000 Canadian dollars from Best Buy, I think this, this laptop should have de delivered on a lot more than it actually does right now. Considering that when the 3070 series laptops launched a year, maybe a year and a half ago, they were easily and comfortably sitting between $2,000 to $2,300 mark Canadian. So I don't feel that the $700 to $800 price pump is justified with this laptop simply by leaving the 4070 without actually backing it up with that performance. Now, there is a boost from the 30 series to the 40 series in, in, in this laptop. However, that still does not translate to the performance. If you, if you and, and considering that some of the other outlets, such as Hardware Unbox, who regularly look at these laptop GPUs as well, decided to cancel their coverage of the 4070 GPU, speaks tons and volumes about what's going on with NVIDIA, with the RTX 4070 and laptops this year, for example, and with ASUS and this particular model, the ASUS ROG Strix G18 for 2023. So I don't feel that the value proposition is there if you're buying this only for gaming. If you're buying this as a multi-purpose machine and you're going to be gaming on occasion, you game using RTS or uh, open world games or RPG games where you don't really need very fast high fresh refresh rates, you should still be able to have a very enjoyable gaming experience with this machine. And in my personal opinion, there's no need to crank settings and everything up to cycle levels such as in Cyberpunk 2077. You're, you're not going to be standing there and enjoying every little speckle and ray traced shadow and ray traced uh, you know, path tracing issues that are uh, uh, elements in the game. You're going to be very busy playing and enjoying. And finally, to conclude, as I said in my earlier segment about the GPU performance, uh, I think this is a laptop, if you're looking for an all-around desktop replacement laptop or something that's beefy and can crunch through uh, your you know, heavy developer workflows or your programming or editing workflows, but also give you the ability to game on the side with some decent settings and you play kind of slower paced RT, RTS or RPG games or open world games, you should have a lovely time with this laptop. And if it's your only laptop, you don't have a prior generation or you don't follow tech as closely as I do, then you should be able to enjoy this laptop without any worries. Now, I feel that the price could be better and, and I, my intuition says that this laptop will actually dry, drop in price quite quickly if ASUS is not able to address the issues with performance on that 4070 laptop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.